Hello friends, in previous lectures we had considered the chapter number 6 which is refraction of light and from this lecture we are going to consider the chapter number 7 which is lenses. So in this series of lectures we are going to study about the lenses. Now the previous chapter videos already I had posted on the YouTube. If you haven't watched those videos, I'm going to share the link of the all videos of the chapter number 6, which you can access very easily. So, without wasting time, here we are going to start the next chapter, which is chapter number 7. Now, in the chapter number 7, we have to consider uh, some sort of surfaces, which are going to be referred as lenses we are using the word lens for such a type of surfaces now uh, in uh, such a type of surfaces uh, what to consider that means how we are going to study all these surfaces so this is very important thing now in the last year if we revise some factors of the last years then you know that uh, you had studied about the reflection of light and that's why we had considered glass surfaces which are going to show the reflection that means we had studied about the mirrors in the last year but here we had studied in the previous lesson the concept refraction of light and for the refraction we need transparent surfaces and these lenses are nothing but they are the transparent surfaces so first of all we are going to consider how those are going to be created so Lens is a transparent medium bounded by how many surfaces? Two surfaces. The mirrors are made by only single surfaces. But here, lens is a transparent medium, that means glass surface, which are going to be bounded by two surfaces. So, how many surfaces are there? Two surfaces we are considering for creating the lens and both surfaces are should be transparent so in this way we are able to create the lens and the lens which has two spherical surfaces the lens which has two spherical surfaces which are popped up outwards that means uh, in the middle they are popped up in the outward direction that means uh, they have outward portion at that particular uh, middle section so such a type of lens uh, is going to be referred as a convex lens either you can refer it as a convex lens or double convex lens later on I am going to show the images of all these lenses so first we are considering the definitions so how we are going to identify the convex lens or double convex lens so the this type of lens is thicker uh, near the center as compared to the edges that means if you compare all the portion from edges to the center then the central portion is going to be thicker as compared to the uh, edge portion <coughs> so this uh, these are referred as a convex or double convex lens then the lens with both surfaces spherical on the inside that means the spherical surfaces their nature is different now puffed up outwards that one is the convex but here uh, it is not puffed up so it uh, that spherical surface is present inside so such a type of lenses are going to be referred as concave or double concave lens they are referred as a concave or double concave lenses and if we consider the structure of these types of lenses then they are going to be thinner at the center as compared to the edges that means edge is going to be thicker and the center is going to be thinner if we are comparing both convex and concave they are exactly opposite see in case of convex lens they are thicker in the center and in case of concave they are thinner and at the edges concave lenses are thicker and uh, convex lenses are thinner so these are the two types of lenses which we are going to consider to study the refraction of light different phenomenon we are going to consider now depending on how many surf uh, which type of surfaces we are uh, taking bounding with each other so lenses are divided in certain categories so the first category is regarding the convex lens which is biconvex lens we are referring it as a biconvex lens so here bi means two 
and both surfaces are convex so that's why it is going to refer as a biconvex lens so the first diagram is showing the biconvex lens then in the next category one surface is convex and another surface uh, is plane surface so such a type of uh, lens is referred as a plano convex lens such a type of lens is going to be referred as a plano convex lens you can see the diagram for plano convex also one surface is convex another surface is plane that is plano convex then both surface are convex but uh, they are aligned in the same direction so such a type of lens is referred as a uh, positive meniscus so this is referred as a positive meniscus like uh, when you are inserting some material uh, some liquid material in tube like structure then you are able to see such a type of meniscus that means upper level so these are the positive meniscus okay then uh, next type is biconcave lens because both surfaces are concave in nature so this is a biconcave lens then uh, similar to that of plano convex next one is plano concave one surface is concave another surface is plane so it is plano concave and last one is negative meniscus both surfaces are going to be concave uh, and they should be tilted at one end so it is a uh, negative meniscus so these are the six types of lenses which we are going to use in our day to day life to study the <coughs> different instruments or to study the different applications of light or to study the different properties regarding the light waves refraction of light waves so in this lesson we are going to consider all about these lenses convex and concave and there are three three types of each so you should remember these types now in order to study the refraction of light we should know some concepts or some definitions or some terms which we are going to use while studying the refraction of light with the help of lenses so you should know these definitions then only we are able to study all the phenomena so the first important concept or first important term is the center of curvature so you all are familiar uh, with these terms actually in cases of mirrors but we are applying the same concept for Uh, lenses so first concept is or first term is center of curvature so we are going to define it like in this way the centers of spheres whose part form surfaces of the lenses are called centers of curvature of the lenses that means actually the lens one surface if we consider a particular surface of lens either it is concave or convex actually that surface is spherical and it is nothing but it is a very small portion of sphere that means it is taken from the sphere okay so we have to consider center of that sphere from whom we had taken the part of that spherical surface and then they are forming the lenses so those centers are referred as a centers of curvatures of the lenses and here if you consider we are using the plural form for lens curvature as well as center as well as sphere because in the lens how many surfaces are there two surfaces are there either both concave both convex one convex one plane or uh, like this so different possibilities are there that already we had discussed in the previous slide okay and a lens with both surfaces spherical has how many centers of curvatures it has two centers of curvature which are referred as c1 and c2 two surfaces are there so that's why we have to consider two centers so similar to that of centers we have to consider two radius so we are defining it as a radius of curvature so next term is radius of curvature whose symbol is capital r so the radii r1 and r2 of the spheres whose part form surfaces of the lenses are called radii of the curvature of the lenses <coughs> so the definition of radius of curvature is similar to that of center of curvature only you have to replace the word center by radius then next concept is principal axis 
Now, actually, principal axis is a imaginary line. It is imaginary line. So, actually, physically, it is not present there. But we are drawing a imaginary line which is passing through the both the centers of curvature is going to refer as a principal axis of that lens. If it is passing through only one center, then it is not going to be principal axis. So, it should pass through both the centers of curvature and just remember for every, every lens, for every lens, whether it is biconvex or biconcave, there are two centers of curvature and they are present on opposite sides, either sides of the lens. So, if C1 is present on left hand side, C2 should be present on right side like this. So, that's why uh, this imaginary line should pass through both the centers of curvatures, then only it is referred as a principal axis. The next one is optical center. Okay, Optical center means origin point. In other words, in simple words, origin you have to consider. So, the point inside the lens on the principal axis. So, where is the optical center? It is inside a lens. It is a small point and that present on a principal axis, not only in the uh, inside the lens, but it should be present on the principal axis through which light rays passes without changing their path is called optical center of the given lens. That means whenever that uh, light waves is incident on that point which is present inside the lens and on the principal axis, all the light waves are going without changing their paths. So, this is the optical center. That means all the rays are going undeviated. Then next one is principal focus. Next term is principal focus. Focus means gathering point. Focus means gathering point. Focus means gathering point we have to consider. Now, when light rays which are parallel to the principal axis are incident on any type of lens, either convex or concave lens, then if we consider all these parallel rays are incident on a convex lens, then they converges to point on the principal axis. That means they are, after passing through the lens, all the light rays are gathering at a single point and this particular point is called as a principal focus of the given lens. Okay, uh, And uh, just remember, uh, light rays parallel to the principal axis falling on the convex lens. They are coming together after the refraction. They are gathering. They are gathering at a single point. So, that's why such a type of lens is referred as a converging lens. Converging means uh, it gathering all the light rays on a single point, at a single point on the principal axis. So, just remember convex lens is a converging lens. And if we consider the previous year concept, convex mirror, we had studied that convex mirror is a diverging mirror. So, see, the phenomenon is changed. There we are using reflection, here we are using refraction. So, that's why properties are changed. For convex lens, it is behaving like a converging lens. And while that of for the concave lens, while that of for the concave lens, uh, after passing through the concave lens, all the light rays are diverges after the refraction. That means they are moving away from each other and it appears that they are coming from the single point uh, which is present behind the lens. So, it is imaginary. That means we imagine that all the light rays are coming from the single point which is present behind the concave lens and that point is referred as a principal focus for the concave lens. And as in case of concave lenses, the light rays are diverging from each other after refraction. So, such a type of lens is referred as a diverging lens. And in mirror, it is converging mirror. So, just see the difference. Okay. The next definition is focal length, <coughs> which is denoted by small f. And principal focus is denoted by capital F. So, just remember the difference. The focal length is now distance. Which distance? We have to measure the distance between optical center and principal focus of the given lens. And then that distance is going to be referred as a focal length. 
that distance is going to be referred as a focal length of the given uh, convex lens or given concave lens so these are some definitions or these are some terms which we are going to use to study the lenses either it is convex or concave so here you can see that the convex mirror is shown on convex mirror the all rays are gathering at single point f2 so that's why it is a principal focus and what will be the distance between optical center and that f2 which is small f that is our focal length for the convex lens and for concave lens all the rays are appears to be coming from single point behind the concave lens so that is our focal point or focus point and the distance is referred as a focal length and if you observe very properly for convex lenses the focal length is present on the right hand side and for concave lenses it is present on the left hand side so this phenomenon you have to use in the later on concept so remember <coughs> where is the position of focal length for convex lens on the right side and for concave lens on the left hand side and for each convex or concave lens there are two focal points <coughs> f1 and f2 one is present on left hand side one is present on right hand side so just remember uh, as we had combined two surfaces so second refraction is obtained from the second surface so most of the time we are considering the principal focus f2 okay so these are some terms which are related to the lenses so i hope you got all the terms actually we had studied all these terms in the previous year also but those are for the mirrors and here we are using all those concepts for the or definitions for the mirrors so that's it for today in the next lecture we are going to consider the next concept of uh, convex lens how images are going to form uh, the ray diagrams we are going to consider some rules are there uh, how we are going to uh, consider the incident ray refracted ray in case of convex lens in case of concave lens what are the rules by following those rules how images are forming so all those things we are going to see in the next video so thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed this video uh, if you want to get updates regarding the next videos of this lesson from this series of lectures then you can like subscribe and share our page and also you can press the bell icon so you will get updates in the future you will get notification in the future so again thanks for watching the video have a nice day